Hi everyone, my name is Ruan Boerter. I'm the DJI Enterprise Product Manager at Rectron. Uh, today we are celebrating the launch of our Rectron Drone Academy and we have some of our products here uh, on display as well. Uh, right here I've got the M300 with, with me. It's our workhorse drone, multiple payloads. It's got um, about 50 minutes flight time and definitely the industry standard when it comes to drone technology out there. Uh, the M300 here with its current configuration, um, it's got the H20T Zenmuse uh, payload uh, which has thermal capability as you can see here. There's a thermal. Obviously let's... Along with that there's multiple sensors on this array here as you can see there. So you've got your 200 times zoom lens here. Uh, that's your thermal imaging lens. This is a laser range finder that can actually uh, measure ranges up to 1.2 kilometers and also pin, pin it down on the map. So wherever that camera is looking, you'll actually see a pinpoint on the map. So a use case scenario would be to, to have a ground crew, maybe a security company or a team. You have your overwatch unit and you can actually guide your, your team to, to upgrade suspects or track suspects in that sense. Um, that's not the only use case, there's multiple other use cases such as infrastructure inspections where the zoom camera will definitely come into play. You don't have to, to put yourself or the drone in arms way, you can actually just zoom in to what you need to be inspecting. Things like solar panels, roof inspections, um, even like the, the earthquake scenario in, in Turkey uh, where you need to, to map an area and see where you need to approach and actually uh, assist people. This is definitely the configuration. There's multiple configurations for this unit as well. So the camera is detachable. You can, um, for instance, load on the Zenmuse P1 which is more a survey grade camera. So that speaks to your mapping um, needs. There's also the Zenmuse L1, which is a LiDAR scanner, which will obviously do LiDAR scanning of infrastructure as well. Um, as you can see in the unit, has multiple sensors. Uh, so this is for obstacle avoidance. So it actually has two cameras in the front, on the sides. So all round sensing, which can actually pick up obstacles um, and avoid them actively. And it's also got your infrared sensors there, bottom, top, um, it can actually pick up any obstacles and avoid it actively. Some other features, auxiliary lights, so if you're flying in low light conditions, it's got auxiliary lights to light up the roof, so it can actually see the roof, and same at the bottom. Uh, for safety, a beacon, for uh, manned aircraft, or even your visual teams at the uh, on the ground to actually actively spot the drone in the air. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's the M300. It's a beautiful machine. So, with the current condition of load shedding, can this thing, this baby, operate in the dark spaces? 100 percent. So, uh, that, that's where your infrared sensors will come in, so dark spaces. Essentially, you wouldn't fly it in two confined spaces, but the possibility is there for it to... to uh, the. The reasoning behind it is the, the space is limited and the sensors will actually actively stop you from flying into objects. However, obviously if you're flying in the air, you have your thermal cameras, etc. Um, so that will definitely see in the dark, as you can see. You'll be able to pick up heat signatures. I'll just zoom out here a bit. It's difficult to see. Where's a nice subject? Oh, we're facing the wall, yeah? There we go. There we go. So they love this one. So obviously that will function at night as well. So just a bit of, on the zoom capability. Let's try zoom there quickly. But obviously this we in a limited space here so um, actually using the drone outside would be more <laughs> you know actually convey yeah. what it actually in can do. Because it meant to work outside. hundred percent. So in terms of empowering batteries and all that. How many batteries do you need? To right, so it runs on a minimum of two, uh, which we call the TB60 batteries. Mm -hmm. They are hot swappable, which means you can remove one and the drone stays on. 
Uh, this is merely for, for quick operation, so when the unit is uh, uh, drained, you can land it and quickly swap out one battery at a time without turning it off, you don't lose video. And then how long does it operate? Uh, you're looking at around 50, uh, 40 to 50 minutes. Oh, depending on okay. your configuration. One battery or both of them. Uh, so so the, the dual battery system is more for redundancy sake, so if you have a failure on one battery, you have a backup. Um, there's a lot of redundancy factors built into the drone, so it's got dual GPS, um, uh, dual parameter, uh, dual navigation system, so everything, so if you have a failure on one component, there's a backup component as well, so the drone won't necessarily just fall out the sky. And then how long does it take for you to charge the battery? That depends, so it's uh, temperature dependent, so in winter, I think in winter, not sure. But anyway, it takes around 40 to 50 minutes to, to charge a set of batteries. Uh, we have, don't have the battery station yet. Uh, you get a big battery station as well, which charges uh, consecutively up to eight batteries at a time. Um, and then obviously you'll control the battery as well. So this is also auxiliary battery. So you can see, uh, you can actually remove this battery. Yeah. And then, but your controller still stays on. Oh. So this is also nice. backup, backup, backup. Everything is very redundancy um, related. So this is just extra battery. So it's not dependent on the network or anything like that? Um, it does need connectivity. So I was asking about the, the load shedding thing, because I've, I've seen with many machinery, mm. it cannot operate when it's... So the, the, the only reason that you would necessarily want to connect to the network is to have your map functionality. Oh. Otherwise, the drone will still in the, um, actively be um, independent without internet connection. Yeah. And then earlier on, you said something about areas that you are restricted where you right. cannot use this. If you can, as you can see, we that. are right here in the flight path of Grand Central. So, to actually, show you the airport there. So, we are located right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the airport. So, at this point, it will actually tell me that we are not allowed to. to Why fly. is that? If I may ask. So obviously the we have aeroplanes flying actively here. So the drone will pick up the no-fly zone. Oh, this is the, this is I actually hear. a no-fly zone. I hear you. So yeah. So obviously you can see all the airports around in the area. And um, as soon as it connects as well, it will download this map and the no-fly zones as well and update it actively. So. Yeah, there are ways of bypassing it, so that's a registration system at DJI, and then obviously you need to take responsibility if you're going to fly in, <laughs> into an airplane. Yes. And then in terms of weather, weather conditions, if it's rainy, it's too windy? Sure, IP45 rating, so um, rainy conditions, you can still operate 100%. Um, you don't need to bring the drone down. Obviously, it's not waterproof, mm -hmm. don't submerge it, but in, in rainy conditions, um, it's definitely still operable. So, and then for me to operate, do I need a qualification? Sure, you need your, your RPL, so this is what the Drone Academy is about today. The first one That's in the it. Country. That's it. Well, no, these are multiple, so this is Rectron's first one. Um, so to operate, you need your licensing in that sense, so your remote pilot license. And then obviously to, to, to certify repairs, you need your RMT, which is remote uh, maintenance technician. So that's for fixing. That's for fixing it. So that's uh, RMT. Uh, think of it like an aircraft. So you need a qualified technician to work on an aircraft and sign off the job that the correct measures were taken to to repair the unit. Very similar uh, legislational rules exist for drones. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Um, so tell me, um, do you guys sell it to individuals or? Yeah, so Rectron's business model, obviously we are uh, IT distributors, so we sell to resellers, so other companies um, that will obviously sell it on to the end user, so we do not uh, sell to the general public. Um, in the drone space, we have strict criteria, so obviously we do not want these drones to hand, uh, land up in the wrong hands or even... Um, have a customer have a bad experience with it, so um, there are quite a lot of cri uh, qualifying criteria for resellers to be able to sell these units as well. Okay, so um, another question. So, what are the disadvantages of of, of, the, of the drone? Because um, remember, the last time um, we were at before, before here, we attended. Um, 
uh, something similar to this with you guys and um, I, 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 I saw this. So when I got home I got to actually do a bit of research right. and um, I saw that there was an incident where it crashed somewhere in Canada. So, so what happened there? How, how does that happen? Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it disadvantages, but I'll call it limitations. So battery life is one of them. So obviously with new battery technology coming out, we will see improvements in flight times. Um, in the sense of crashing, most likely it's user error, not taking precautions with safety checks. So um, there's a pre pre flight checklist, just like an airplane. Um, that you need to check your wings, you need to check the arms for cracks, any defects, etc. Before you take to the sky, you need to check your battery health as well. So batteries have a limited lifespan and we get all the data um, on the controller for you to see. So I think in a sense of disadvantages or, or limitations, it's also the operator that needs to take proper care of the unit and, and fly it. And obviously in a safe manner as well. Stay away from residential areas, ro uh, public roads, etc. Don't fly over people. So that there's there's a lot of, um, and that's where the licensing comes in as well. And the drone academy is to train people to operate these units in the correct and safe manner. Just a follow-up question on that one. Does it have a black box where you can show sure. what happened? The error, user error, or is the machine? Hundred percent. So uh, all the flight data is captured on the unit. Um, obviously, when this thing comes down. Um, it's obliterated, yes. it's totally smashed, So, but all the data is actively transferred to the controller and you'll be able to upload that to the cloud and then DJI will be able to analyze if, um, so for instance a case of where there's a sudden stop, so you've flown into something which doesn't really happen with all the sensors, but you'll see a sudden stop on one of the, the props that indicates that that prop has hit something and that data will actually be captured and you'll be able to analyze Okay, so in, um, in a scenario where the weather is very bad, I understand that it uses uh, batteries, right? Right. Okay, so if the weather is bad, um, like what happens, what's the duration? Oh, okay. So it's uh, it's got a, a IP45 rating, so it's water resistant. Okay. Um, obviously, don't submerge it, but in rainy conditions, you can still fully operate the unit. And then, when no does it um, take a lot of um, power? Right. So device. so your your flight time will be reduced in in adverse conditions. So even when it rains, heavy winds, um, if you're flying it very um, uh, aggressively, then definitely the battery life will be impacted. Okay. And in terms of qualifications, so if a, a, maybe a student after matric they want to operate one of these things, right. for me to qualify to be an operator, how long is the qualification for? And uh, is there a prerequisite that you would need? I don't know if I'm making sense. I wouldn't say prerequisite, um, like the training academy, uh, it's, I think it takes up to six months. For, for you to, to so the saturation of the course. That's it. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. So obviously Sam Tyler, you can also ask him. Um, but yes, there's no prerequisites uh, apart from health, uh, your health checks. So you need to obviously be uh, not disabled. You have to have, always have control of the unit. Um, there are plans, maybe, uh, and this is also uh, uh, regulatory based. Uh, obstacles that we are facing. For instance, somebody that's uh, disabled uh, sitting down in a wheelchair, why can they not operate a drug? So, uh, a lot of the other safety factors is that you need to have a fire extinguisher on hand when operating. So, when lithium ion batteries uh, get pierced, they do catch fire. So, that person that's disabled will need to be able to run to where the drone crashed if, and put out the fire if needed. But that, that's, that's a more of a health check type of thing. We need to actually be signed off uh, and healthy to operate the drone. Yeah. So after six months I get a pilot license? Right. There's different uh, versions of it. Uh, BB loss, which is beyond visual line of sight. So it's like your license is your... Easy, like like uh, you need a BBL or a truck license etc. So so that they are different grades. So beyond visual line of sight, that's a different, totally different course that you need to be taking. Um, and then obviously, most likely you will get a visual line of sight.
uh, where you always need to have an eye on the drone and physically see it. So, so in a case where you have a fault on the controller, you still need to be able to operate the drone and bring it back yourself.